talking about connections, some of you may relate and some of you may not, but it can be difficult to make new connections, especially if you don't know what to say, right? For the second half of this program, you will learn practical tips on how to design your unique value proposition, use the power of storytelling to stand out and get ahead by establishing meaningful connections, as we welcome Anchal Girachka. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Anchal. Um, nice to meet everyone. Um, just before I start, I would like to uh, begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. I extend that respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Anjul and um, I'll start with sharing a, a bit of a story about myself. Um, so in November 2018, one of the most unexpected things that happened in my life. So um, I used to live in New York and I was a foreigner there as well. And I, my American work visa got rejected. Um, I lost my job because of it. I had to leave New York quite soon. And I just felt really dejected as, you know, as anyone might. And just everything sort of kind of go haywire because it was very unexpected. Despite that, um, so after a couple of, you know, trials and like doing things, figuring things out, I was like, let's accept it and pick myself back up and try new things. Uh, so you might be wondering, why am I telling you this story of a visa rejection when talking about like designing your career in a foreign country and how do you, how do you talk to people? How do you take, kickstart your career? Uh, that's because you will face rejections like the one I experienced in many phases of your career. So whether when you're applying for jobs, whether um, you know you you decide you want to switch careers in the future, or um, you might be you might be trying for an internship, lots of occasions, and sometimes even in your personal relationships. So I'm here to share with you my journey of how I basically stepped up, overcame a failure, and uh, did that with a challenge. So moved to another foreign country, which is Australia, and embarked on a new adventure. Um, so I'm Anshul, and I currently work as a senior design researcher at Xero, which is an accounting software um, that's based out of Australia. Um, and I moved to Australia in the beginning of 2019 after everything that happened with my life in New York and just to take up a challenge and kickstart my career over here. And I learned very early on that to succeed in this today's competitive job market, um, as a foreigner especially, build a career, you have to build a career that leverages your unique passions and talent. It's almost certain that at some point you will need to brand yourself professionally. So can like basically stand out of the crowd and ensure that other people recognize the powerful contributions you can make. So uh, what I'm gonna do here today is introduce yourself, you to a little like toolkit or methodology that I utilized while I was, um, I was going through that career journey and that I used to brand myself. So, um, Let's start with something basic. So I'm going to introduce you to this concept that is basically this holy grail of innovation and product thinking, which is called design thinking. Some of you may know about it and some of you may not. Basically, design thinking is an iterative process that uh, to understand users, to challenge assumptions and redefine problems and create unique solutions, innovative solutions to prototype and test. It basically emphasizes on defining your challenges, ideating, noticing patterns, and really just trying things out. Um, it's um, just, just as a framework, it involves a bit of five stages. So we're um, empathize, which is empathizing with your user, defining the problem that you're really solving for, ideate, which is like starting to generate some ideas and identify different solutions, uh, prototype, which is just an experimental phase, 
uh, where you basically the aim is to identify the best possible solution and then just test and iterate. Um, so you might be wondering, this is all about product thinking and innovation. How does this really apply to my career? Um, the key is that um, think of yourself as a brand. Your goal at the start of any sort of job hunt is to cultivate a powerful brand that reflects who you are and who you want to be. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, take you through some of these design thinking steps and, and how you can apply that um, to creating and thinking about yourself as a personal brand. Um, so first of all, we have empathize. So, you know, in, in, in product thinking, it's a lot about like empathizing with your user. In this case, it's empathizing with yourself and recognize where you're starting. What is that like starting point over here? Um, it's basically a way to um, get a deeper understanding of yourself and what you want in your career. So um, what does that in involve, right? So like, think about factors that influence your career. So like, what are some of the values you have? What are some things? So like, for, my, for, for example, one of the things, factors was, oh, I need to um, get a visa sponsorship when I moved here. So that was a very, it was a very crucial factor over here. Um, then um, secondly, think about what drives you. What do you? What brings you joy? What do you really enjoy doing? Um, this is this is crucial even when you're like thinking about what career do you want, right? So, so you might have thought about that, but also like with a job, what do you want? What what you know? When you wake up in the morning, what is that thing that's gonna take you? Like you know, like it's gonna it's basically gonna make you excited about doing the job. Um, then think about what frustrates you. What are the things that you just cannot stand and it brings you down? Uh, nobody wants a job that basically you're going to, you're not going to be, um, you know, you, you're not going to enjoy and you're just going to like get frustrated by doing that. So um, yeah, just, just think about that. And then also think about what do others think of you, right? What, what like, what, what are your strengths? What are some, um, what are the ways that people describe you? Do they describe you as, you know, like a really social person or, you know, they might describe you as someone who's very calm and like that's, those things were important. Those are like, list them down, like think, think about what are those factors, right? What, what this basically helps you do is um, it, it kind of helps you reflect. So let me give you an example, right? So, um, when I moved to Australia, basically I applied for everything and anything that popped up. So like, you know, like I was on LinkedIn and just like apply, 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 apply to everything. Was I trying to do all of those jobs? No. Were there, were those the companies that I wanted to work at? Not really. And what this really meant was that it was like, honestly, just a bit random. Um, a lot of, um, it led to a lot of like rejections early on as well, because obviously I was not, you know, um, equipped to do those jobs or like, you know, I didn't really feel about, feel, feel it essentially. And, um, those rejections early on gave me this like feeling of purposelessness and like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my career? Um, but, but you have to kind of pick yourself from that. Right. So like upon reflecting what was happening, I, um, I was able to sort of carve out what what are the things that matter to me, and what um, what should I really be focusing on? So, so writing down some of these like key things helped me bring that focus and narrow down what solutions I came up with, and where you know where should I really be applying? What kind of roles are going to be you know where I'm going to be successful? So. Um, that's like sort of like a you know self re reflective stage. So once you've gone through um, through that and understood sort of what you want, what you can do is use that to craft the problem. So think of it as a problem. Like how can I find a job is a problem, but but define that with your goal with it. So convert those values, those strengths, or any factors that matter into problem questions. So like, you know, like analyze it, 
Con um, you know, you might find five to six patterns, convert those into goals and reframe that as like problem questions. So, you know, what, what started off as like, oh, how do I find a job to just, how do I find a job, for example, with me where, where I can leverage my global experience? So that was one of the things that, you know, came up. I, I really wanted to um, utilize the skills that I learned in different countries um, and, and leverage that when, um, as I sort of move forward and where, which companies would help me utilize those, that global experience as well. Um, so you've reframed your, um, basically your goals into a problem statement. And once you now have that problem statement, right, what you can do is essentially research your destination. So brainstorm what ideas you have. So um, start with like, you can create a mind map, you know, of, of things. But what, what I sort of kind of started to do was brainstorm where you want to work. So um, one of the things, oops, one of the things that I did was um, I wrote down a list of employers, just scribble down where I wanted to work. And just, just a list, like, you know, companies that I knew about, companies that I'd heard about, and these could be like, based on my values or based on just things that I've heard about, right? And then I kind of mapped it against um, things like, do they do visas? Do they, um, you know, are they are they willing to uh, provide me the kind of role that I want? Or like, are they, you know, do they have a global presence, for example? Or, and, and kind of wrote down some questions about what I wanted to know about them as well. Um, and how do you do that, right? You might be like, how do you find all of this information? So like, like check out LinkedIn. There's a lot of times the companies write down stuff or have posted articles about what, what they do. Um, and you might find some things while reading articles. There's also uh, websites like Glassdoor, for example, which have a bit of, you know, some reviews. I wouldn't say, um, take that with a pinch of salt because it's, it's a lot of people, you know, and, uh, almost like maybe frustrated and writing about it as well but you you get a you get a sense check of like what are the things that these companies want this is like preliminary research um align it with your problems and values and like whatever you you care about and then um make a list of so what i did was i made a list of people who worked at these places or like even just interest people who were working in interesting jobs in a sort of the design field, which is what I do. And um, in like a role that I admire or I wanted to know more about that. So um, by by sort of even almost creating like companies and people who work there, you, you, you have like almost a bit of um, an ideation like platform where you can start. And um, then you can start identifying patterns. There might be like, you might, you might realize that a bunch of these people do the same kind of stuff or a bunch of these people attend this networking event quite a bit um and i hate to use the word stalking but that's probably the best um way to describe this but like stalk their bios online you can usually find out about people through their about like in through an about page of the company's website but sometimes also like they might have written articles and familiarize yourself with that and um, figure out like how did they progress in their careers. So you you're basically understanding, learning more about these people before before doing anything. Um, <clears throat> next thing, what, what I did was like reach out to the people. So um, basically, um, do do informational interviews. There's multiple ways to do that, right? So um, you can find out if they're going to. Um, a talk or a meetup where um, where basically they're talking or maybe they're attending that because you've you found that out. Go attend those because you'll be able to, you know, and, and in today's world, virtually meet them and you can talk to them, learn about you know what they're doing, what um, what their companies do, and just really enhance your research about what what came up. So um, and then another thing is you can reach out to them on social like LinkedIn or any other social media where they're really active. Um, so to give you an example, right? Um, what I did, um, so when I moved to Australia, I made this list of people and I was like, okay, I'm gonna reach out to them. And <clears throat> so a bunch of 
the the people that I wanted to work. This is back, you know, pre-COVID era. Um, they were they were based in Melbourne, and I was um, I was up in Queensland at that time. And what I did was I took a trip to Melbourne, and I wrote to them um, mostly on LinkedIn, but um, there was also this um, Slack channel. And I don't know if you all know about Slack, but it's just a chat platform that you know a lot of tech companies use. And um, so I, I found them there or I found them through LinkedIn and kind of my messaging was essentially, hey, I'm new here and I'm looking to understand what you do and you know what your role is. And basically arranged several informational interviews with these people. Um, this was face to face, but you know, in the it's, it's a, a, in the virtual sort of era during COVID, you can do that online through Zoom or Meet or any of those. Um, but I um, and and I think one of the key things is networking. I can't emphasize the power of networking. Um, there is there's so much value in meeting people and building those relationships with them. Um, and let me give you an example, right? So in fact, my first job ever after graduation was through an Instagram DM. So um, I know it sounds really strange, but um, this company, this agency that I really wanted to work for, I, you know, followed them, you know, like I, um, I was looking at their careers page. They didn't have any internships. They didn't have any jobs. And um, one of the one of the things I was doing was just following their page on Instagram. And one of the main researchers posted something on Instagram via, via the company's profile. And she was uh, she, she was in India at that time, and from the city where I grew up. And I was like, oh, this is you know this is like right next door to my parents' place. And so what I did was I was just like, hey, you went to my favorite cafe in Mumbai. I would love to chat with you and know more about your experience. And that was like a you know a sparking conversation because she could relate to it. She told me about her time in India and what project she was really working on. And then we arranged a time to meet for a coffee and discuss a little bit about what she does. This led to um, me getting an internship and this led to me getting my first job. So I know this sounds a bit informal uh, and it may not work for all fields. So you really need to know who your audience is, obviously. So wh where are they hanging out, right? Are they are they talking on LinkedIn? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Instagram? Just just if you you figure out where um, where your audience is and reach out to them there in their sort of space. Um, so you might be wondering, like, OK, so you're talking about networking. How do you kind of do that, right? How do you reach out to these people? So you kind of, again, have to hone in on your own values and what motivates you, what your strengths are that you've outlined, because that gives you like a sort of, it's almost like a fulcrum, right? And um, what you first need to do is be strategic around who you're contacting. So don't just contact everybody. Just like know who you're contacting, know a little bit about them. So it's not, um, it's not some, it's not, it doesn't seem very random. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, one of my friends very early on told me was, you know, if you're reaching out to people on LinkedIn, for example, don't just add them. They're not going to accept it. You can write a message on LinkedIn, um, a very short one, um, saying that, hey, this is why I'm reaching out to you. So you have to give that context about why you're reaching out. Um, similarly, any other platform that you do use, um, give context and figure out what are some you know maybe you might have a you know a common interest use that leverage that um also like you know see if anyone can connect you with someone because often you might not um you might feel awkward or icky you know like i don't want to just reach out to this person find out if you have common or mutual connections in any way or it could be that you went to the same uni that's one of the things I did. I um, found alumni from my university and reached out to them saying, hey, this is, you know, uh, you went to the same uni and let's have a coffee, that kind of thing. So it's, it's very it's very simple. Uh, um, and, and you know, you reach out to them with a specific purpose, 
but don't give them a spiegel of everything you want because that's what your like coffee catch up is really about. Um, so um, once you've done that, right? So you're just like, okay, now I've, I've networked with this these people. What happens next, right? So you gather all of these amazing ideas. You might learn different things from everyone. You you kind of synthesize all of that. Take all of those learned patterns, and um, and utilize those to like package into solution, and a solution that's not just a CV. So, like, of course, the CV is one thing, but it's time to sort of create your unique value proposition. So again, like, you know, like I said, think of yourself as a brand and what is it that makes you stand out? Think about what you have that others don't have and what do you bring to the table? So if, if think about it as this way, right? Like if you, if you discover a new fashion brand, you might be like, what is so different about this one? There has to be something that stands out. So similarly, you yourself, what's your unique value prop? Um, so how do you do that? Right? Again, start with the basics. That's why that first stage is so important. Go back to the strengths you have. Um, identify, you know, what are what are those key things that makes you um, stand out of the crowd otherwise. So it may not be like specifically in professional side of things, but it might be something about your personality. And you can basically design this to resonate stronger with some of the companies as well. So when I'd say design a solution, right? So think about different ways you can create something unique. So um, for example, I work in, in the design sort of industry. So um, I created a website. And it's very fairly common for people to have a portfolio. But um, what I did with my website was I wrote down these FAQs. Um, and so they were essentially, what are some of those typical questions people ask in an interview? And just like a short response of what that would be from my side. What this meant was that if someone was um, going through my website, they could get a very quick snapshot of who I was and what I could bring to the table. Because otherwise, how, how are you gonna present that? So like, this is just one way of doing it, right? So think about other solutions you might have. You might want to craft a cover letter or you might need to craft, you know, you don't need to have a website only if you're in the creative field. You can have a little website that explains what you do and what you do best. Um, and or you can, you know, have um, have a PDF or like a even even if like a PowerPoint or something, which um, which explains who you are and what's your like little pitch deck. So that brings me to the next part of this conversation. So um, what we're gonna do is do a little exercise, okay? So I'm gonna get all of you to pick a grab a pen and paper or like use your computer or whatever you have around you and um, write down three words someone would use to describe you. Think of these as like, what are your strengths? Um, and what are, what's, what makes you unique? So um, to give you an example, a few things that I've heard a lot of people say about me is I'm approachable, I'm very driven, and I'm very curious. So um, let's take about three minutes. I'm gonna put a timer over here. Um, and just just think about jot down the words and and think about the three words someone has um, used to describe you.
You should have really played some music. And if any of you are comfortable sharing, um, you could post in the comment section what those three words are as well, if you wanted to share with others. All right. Okay. So, um, some great, great examples over here, and you know, really appreciate people sharing that. Um, and if you're struggling with, you know, describing yourself, ask your friends, ask your family members. You know, what what are some things they would use? Because they can always be a good starting point, and then you can reflect on that, and and see if that's you know you you see that as a strength. Sometimes there might be things that um you might not consider it as a strength but other people do so it's this very very um interesting exercise to almost it's a, it's a bit of a self reflection um exercise that you do um and now what you do with these is let's craft a little introduction statement consider this as like your little elevator pitch so i'll take you through an example right so when i graduated from university i would be like Hey, I'm Angel. I just graduated from Parsons School of Designs with a master's degree with a major in blah, 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 blah. I'm looking for a job. That's really boring. Don't you agree? I kind of lost, like I would lose interest in two seconds. So um, it's you, you want people to remember you. Um, so what I'd like you to do is take those strengths from the previous section, right? And take some time to write down a little statement. So the way I did it, right? Um, some of the things that people told me was that, you know, I'm highly driven um, and, you know, I'm curious. So kind of took those things um, and and my statement was kind of like, <clears throat> hi, I'm Anshul. I'm a highly driven design researcher, very curious about exploring the why behind complex problems and providing strategic design solutions to provide the best consumer experience. So that's just an example of what I did. I, I kind of picked that up from like my old letters. <clears throat> so um, we'll take another like um, five minutes. Let's take five minutes for this one. And <clears throat> just just sort of brainstorm, like write a little, little statement using those strengths that you identified in the previous section. Um, so think of it as like, hi, I'm XYZ. 
what next? What do you bring to the table? So I'll give you five minutes to do that. I wish I had music for this one, but I'm not prepared for that. So I'll find what's on my Spotify playlist to play in the background. Okay, so good. you're going to get some hand zimmer from me. Sorry, sorry, everyone. It's not the right music for this time. I'll let you just play your own inspirational music. Um, and I'm just pasting my um, little pitch over here. I would love if people could share some of the things you're writing. Um, think about think about like what makes you stand out. That's that's the key. Like not um, the one I have on the screen is wrong. That's not what is right. It's more about think about like <clears throat> what what makes you special. Use the strengths that you had identified in the previous section. So like you know a lot of people you you mentioned curious. You mentioned hardworking so bring that bring those things bring those into your pitch
All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, just to sort of reiterate what I was saying, right? It's it's think about, <clears throat> you know, what drives you. Bring those values back. Bring those strengths back into a sentence. The reason why I say that, right, is because imagine if you're at a networking event and um, you you are it's a uni networking event. Everyone's from the same uni, so you don't need to mention that you're from that uni doing this. Think about all the other aspects, what makes you stand out. So again, like what is something about you that's different from others? And take that as like your key element. And so you can use this to, um, you know, for a networking event, for example, but you can also use this to create different artifacts. So whether that's like a portfolio website um, where you're writing about you or, when you're doing a little cover cover letter or like an email to introduce yourself for a job, um, the first few sentences that you write or say are really crucial for someone to remember you. So <clears throat> when, when I look at like a cover letter that is addressed to me in my current job now, when people are applying, unfortunately, I don't have always the time to read through everything. So I might skim through it. If those first few sentences are exciting or something different, I'll probably end up reading the rest of it. So think of it that way. Think about like how you can start with something interesting and then move on to, okay, this is what I'm looking for. So <clears throat> this is just an example, right? You can develop like different kind of um, statements based on that. So do like quick, quick um, prototypes. That's what I call it, like quick statements. And the next step is to really test it. So <clears throat> until you don't try, you won't know. So you try a bunch of different strategies. Be um, When you're applying for a job, be selective and specific with your applications based on where you're applying. So a one-size-fits-all approach is not going to work. So for example, if you're um, if you, for certain um, companies, you might try to completely different resume format. Or you might have a very different pitch for um, certain recruiters that you might be speaking directly to. While if you're speaking to someone who already works in the company, you might try a different style. So th think about like different ways you can test those ideas. So don't write just one, write multiple things, right? Different examples of like for a specific role, what would you say? And then get feedback from your network. So um, if you have created, say, a website, get feedback from people that you know, you've networked with in the past and ask them what, did, what do they think about it. Um, and if you have sort of got like an email that you're writing, get, get someone else to read through it. Um, one thing that a lot of people that I've, um, like that I've, I'm friends with or like people that I know do a lot, and I've done that as well, is they will test it with their friends. Like surely that's that's not a bad idea, but your friends will never know everything. So try, test it out with people in the industry. So apply to jobs using a specific type of format or try a different resume for another job. So these, these kind of things will help you understand what works, what doesn't. Um, and again, it's not a one size fits all approach. So that's why it's, you need to put all of these together and be like, okay, this is what this company does. This is how I'm going to use it. So, so what from all of this, right? We went through <clears throat> these five different stages, uh, which is empathize with yourself, define your goals, ideate and research your dream, prototype solutions to achieve that, and then test and iterate. So one thing that is important to tell you is that these stages are not always sequential. Um, they often kind of run in parallel to each other, out of order, and maybe you'll repeat some steps again and again in an iterative fashion. And that's because you you might come to, you might have an idea and you might test it and then <clears throat> realize, no, you need to improve it. So you might I design it again and then you might test it again. So this is like a, it, it, it could be a loop. And just remember, this is also just a little toolkit to work through that journey. 
you might not get a job right away by just following these steps. It's just a process that gets you closer to understand exactly what you want and how to approach that. So rather than like just doing it randomly for one thing. So um, I'll take a step back, right? And tell you how I have taken this toolkit um, and utilized it for myself. So my process was like not linear at all. I had a lot of ups and downs in this whole process. So <clears throat> let me take an example of zero. So the company that I work with right now, um, what I did was um, I'd come across this company through someone who had mentioned it to me. I researched quite a bit about the company, what, um, you know, what, what, what kind of, um, what is their growth plan? What are their values? And align that to some of the things that I cared about. So remember, in, initially, I mentioned that I was quite keen on a company that had a sort of global mindset. And that was one of the things that really attracted me to this company. So, you know, I, I wrote down a bunch of these things and then thought about like the different roles in the companies that um, that related to design and research and reached out to some people who worked there. And one of them being my boss right now. And um, I spoke to them and I was like, I want to know a little bit about the company and what work you do. Um, and had a chat with them and spoke during that chat, spoke a lot about how the values of zero aligned with the values that I had and that this might be a good place to start. So I didn't go about chatting to my boss about, oh, hey, I'm looking for a job straight away. It was more about telling what I was there to offer and how my career plans aligned with what they were looking for. And that's when it sort of clicked and, and I was sort of taken to the interview round for a job. So sometimes it's always, sometimes it's also important to know that you're not just networking with people to get a job directly because they might not have a job, but you might do that to learn something about what they do or what they have learned in this process. They can be your mentors. They can be people who help you test out ideas. They might also not have something right now, but maybe in two months something comes up and they might be like, oh, hey, yeah, I remember talking to Anshul. She would be great for this role. And that that, that happened with me. So I spoke to so many people initially who um, were like, oh, we don't have anything. Um, but yeah, we'll let you know. And some of them did reach out to me afterwards and say, oh yeah, I've come across this role in another company or my company is looking for this. Would you be interested in that? So these, these are some of the key things that are important when developing these relationships. And because everyone, you, you might send like a cookie cutter cover letter and a CV to everybody, but unless you don't have that like, little spark, it's not going to stand out. Um, so and one of the key, key things in this entire process, right, is embracing those failures. So like I said in the start, like failures are always going to be a part of your life. And the you don't just stop there. You pivot your process. So figure out what went wrong and use that as a problem and then start that cycle again. So use that as a problem and be like, how do I solve this problem now? That was the problem that I, so get feedback from people when you're, you know, when when you come across a failure or um, learn about what went wrong, like self-reflect. So these are the key strategies to do when, you, when you're going through this toolkit as well, which is pivoting through the process because it's not a standard linear process. So um, anyway, that's kind of, the um, end of my conversation. What I wanted to do was leave um, leave the door open for questions. So um, if you want, you can type those questions in the chat, and I, I can verbally answer them. And um, feel free to connect with me. So you can reach out to me on my email or through LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to you know chat a little bit more about your career and how you can do things. So um, yeah, I'll leave it up for questions. Thank you, Anacho. 
for such inspiring um, story and sharing your journey with us as well. So, so it was very wonderful and so like the speech was very wonderful and engaging. Now we have learned that the best tip on how we can network and pitch our skills. We are now to chasing success at the moment. So I was so I was wondering, in terms of, um, so if if you need to give advice for international students for networking, what would you be? Um, I think one of the sort of um, things as as a as a migrant as well, right? Hone in on the international aspect that you have. Like you all come from very different backgrounds. You bring in a lot being an international student in Australia. Use that as like a like a starting point because that's always going to be different from someone else. So that, that would be my I guess tip for, for international students. And and another thing is that, you know, I, I can totally empathize with people who might be a little um jittery when they're talking to people or when they're coming across someone in a networking event you um so so those kind of things oh that's the sort of next question as well um it's it's basically how um practicing with others so you you've got friends you've got family members do practice sessions and not practice sessions where you're just like showing them something like do a pretend like role play right like like there are someone who works at a company and and just practice different types of statements as well and see which one is the one that they respond to the best so because it's always about different types yeah totally agreed so like we have a question from joe any tips on overcoming fear or nervousness of networking uh good point um so um one of the things that um, this has always been tricky for me to answer, right? Because I, one of my strengths in, uh, I actually did a strengths test as well, is about winning over others. And um, so for me, talking to people comes very naturally, uh, but I totally empathize with anyone who might feel nervous, right? So um, I think write it down, because once you've written it down, you, you know what you need to say, so you won't fumble as much and um practice it like i said so practice it with people um yeah and um yeah that's, that's a, what i would say yeah totally agree i i feel like practice is very important for international students as well so we have a question from kimberly so how do you engage in a networking event where high level personalities are present Cool. Um, interesting one. Um, so when you say high level personalities, um, do you do you mean like, you know, sort of C level executives? And um, is that is that what you're suggesting? Just confirming with you, Kimberly? So That's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, from yes. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so that's interesting, right? Because think about um, if, if it's say, for example, like a CEO of a company, right? Let's take that as an example. And um, you you might have heard stuff about them. Okay, not just, just a cookie cutter stuff, right? Like, oh yeah, he's the CEO of this, he went to this school. No, more than that, like what are some of the things? You might find that, hey, this CEO likes to play hockey. Just taking an example, right? I'm spitballing over here. So, um, so you use that as as a way to engage conversation with them, and and you know use that as a starting point. Like, hey, so I heard that you play hockey, and I want to understand how do you balance hockey? Um, I mean, your personal life and work life right now. So that gives you a good segue into asking them about their work life as well, but using a very personalized point because everyone loves to, you know, talk to someone who might be like, oh yeah, I I like I'm a fan of you or I know a little bit about you. So use something like that that you can um, use during your interaction. Yeah. So like um yeah, we have another questions from Pirit. So like how do I keep the conversation going after initial LinkedIn connection? Oh, great point. So um, first of all, when you connect with someone on LinkedIn, right? Like I said, don't just add them. Ask, like, tell them why are you adding them 
or like what is it that you want to know about them so you might have looked at this person's profile you might have learned about something so um be like i want to chat with you about how you progress from company a to company b take that as a starting point if they've written something or shared an article um on their linkedin use that as um as a as a conversation starter so you can be like oh i read this article as well would love to discuss what you thought about it these are some of the ways you can do that and um once you sort of build that little initial relationship right you can then move forward to say oh i would love to have a coffee with you and and that's when you make that initial impression as well so um yeah that that's those are some of the tips that i have yes so i have questions myself so you were talking about considering oneself as a brand so yeah. how do you show yourself brand value and build it yeah no interesting so like when you think of any brand right like um let's I'm trying to come up with a brand right now, but take Pepsi. Pepsi as a brand, you know what? What did they do in order to stand out from in the market? Think of think of like what are those extra things so that you can use to stand out. So how do you showcase that? What does a brand do? Right, brand might have an advertisement. They might have a website. They might use social media to um, talk about them. but they don't do all of it all the time they they'll choose the right ones so think about your audience so like if you if you know your audience engages a lot in, on linkedin maybe write an article or a blog post on linkedin and that's a way for you to like showcase who you are um or if you you know say if you're working in the creative sector you might want to use instagram because that's a good way to um showcase your designs or some of the work that you do so these are some um some points that i can think of <laughs> yes totally agree as well so we have one question from akihiro so how do you illustrate an introduction without coming off as fresh of in genuine um how do you iterate an introduction without coming off as fresh or in genuine i think if it um from what i understand from the question right so the reason you identify what what you think is brash or ingenuine right and if it's going to come from um using your own personal values your own personal strengths then it's not going to be ingenuine because it's not cookie cutter it's not like hi i'm anshul i do this i study this because that's that can be very very basic as we say um but you can that's where you add a little like genuine element to it so if if it does that answer your question i'm not um quite sure yeah i believe i believe um you made a very good point for akihiro's questions so i was wondering so we have another question on the screen i met michelle once at a state event in malaysia the moment i got to approach her i got stunned what would you do if you were in my place or how do you create a small talk Oh good point. I think this again goes back to the same question uh similar question from before when you have C level executives right. So um of course you're going to get stunned because it's someone you um you know you didn't expect or you know and uh, even if you did expect you're just like this is such a cool person like how do I how do I make that conversation with them? So think about what you know about them right and use that as a starting point. Um because If you just go like hey you know I really like your work everyone's saying that to them why are they going to spend that 2 seconds to talk to you so um so think about maybe you know what about their personal life do you know for example and and don't go too personal either because that can be very creepy but um think about those elements that you could tie that are personal and professional both yes it was very useful and inspiring So thank you so much Angel. It was very wonderful and engaging for our participants and students. Now